Okay, welcome back to class. So in the first video, we were looking at the first three points, how to set up a macroeconomic model. So we were defining the equilibrium conditions. We were looking at the slope of the uh, two curves and we were also defining the equilibrium. Now it uh, comes to the more interesting part where we always shock one exogenous variable and we wanna find out how this shock is digested, how do the endogenous variables react. Uh, we want to find out how a fiscal shock is digested, how do the endogenous, de endogenous variables react in case that the government is increasing government spending. First of all, we have to find out in which direction does the IS curve shift. This can be seen in a very nice way on uh, slide number 10. Uh, G, government spending, uh, affects the intersection of the IS curve with the vertical axis. So in case that government spending increases, the IS curve will shift upwards. This is also mentioned on slide number 11. In case that the government spending increases, G increases, the IS curve will shift upwards. So let's have a look at this uh, shock in the diagram. This is the initial equilibrium on slide number 24. The IS curve shifts upwards and hence we directly find the new equilibrium. We have to consider that money supply is constant. So M0 is equal to M1. In case that money supply has not changed, also the goods prices cannot change P0 is equal to P1. Then we hit the new IS curve in the red dot and we can see that the exchange rate will decrease. So an increase in government spending is digested in the following way. The goods prices are constant, but the nominal exchange rate decreases. So this is an appreciation of the domestic currency. Let's uh, try to confirm this graphical result by computing the respective multipliers. Now it is the case that we have to consider in the solution vector that the government increases government spending. So DG is positive. The government increases government spending. DG is positive. Do not forget to also consider the uh, Greek parameters. So the delta is also important. In case that we want to compute the price multiplier, we have to consider that the price variable is located on the first position of the vector of the two unknowns. Therefore, we take the solution vector and insert it in the first column of the coefficient matrix. We have the one over delta dg on the first position and in the lower part is zero. And then the minus one and the zero from the coefficient matrix. So we apply Cromer's rule and Cromer's rule tells you compute the determinant of the change coefficient matrix and divide it by the determinant of the unchanged coefficient matrix. So we multiply through the elements on the main diagonal, one over delta dg times zero minus zero times minus one. And we divide it by the determinant of the unchanged coefficient matrix, one times zero minus one times minus one. In the next step, we divide the right hand side of the, we divide this equation by dg. So we get dp over dg is equal to zero. This indicates that an increase in government spending does not affect the goods prices. Goods prices are constant. And this multiplier confirms our graphical analysis. In the next step, we want to compute the exchange rate multiplier. Hence, we have to consider that the exchange rate is located on the second position of the vector of the two unknowns. Therefore, we take the solution vector and insert it in the second position of the coefficient matrix. Uh, we have to compute the determinant of the changed coefficient matrix and divide it by the determinant of the unchanged coefficient matrix. So it's one times zero minus one times one over delta dg. And then in the denominator, one times zero 
minus one times minus one. Hence we get in the numerator one over delta dg and in the denominator a positive one. When we now divide this equation by dg, we get for the exchange rate multiplier, dE over dg is equal to minus one over delta. Since all Greek parameters are positive, the expression in equation 20 is negative. This indicates that there is a negative relationship between these two macroeconomic variables. In case that the government increases government spending, the exchange rate will decrease. Let's conclude. Uh, a fiscal expansion does not influence the domestic price level. However, a fiscal expansion decreases the nominal exchange rate. The domestic currency appreciates in nominal terms. And since the goods prices are constant, this nominal appreciation also leads to a real appreciation. In case that the real exchange rate changes, we know that a purchasing power parity, PPP, does not hold. A real appreciation will crowd out foreign demand for domestic goods. And therefore, we do not have a positive effect on the GDP level Y. The government increases government spending and gets a larger piece of the cake of the GDP. And foreign demand is crowded out. We call this effect like a complete exchange rate induced crowding out effect because of the fact that we have no effect on GDP. Uh, the government increases the piece of the cake they get from the GDP and the foreigners get a smaller piece of the cake. This was the analysis of an expansionary uh, fiscal policy. So when you have looked at all of uh, my videos, uh, we went through all these uh, different steps. So step one, two, three, we define the equilibrium condition. We derive the slope of the curve and we determine the equilibrium. And then we looked at two different shocks, like a shock in money supply and also a shock in government spending. What is left is we can also have a look at other shocks. For example, uh, we can uh, analyze what happens if the foreign price level increases. What happens if uh, there is an increase in uh, the foreign goods prices? What happens if there is inflation in the foreign economy? Does this also lead to inflation in the domestic economy? Or another shock could be that we are looking at uh, how does an increase or a decrease of the foreign interest rate affect the endogenous variables of our economy? For example, right now, the Federal Reserve is increasing its interest rates, so R star increases. And hence, it could be a very good idea to analyze what happens to our endogenous variables. How is the domestic economy affected by the interest rate hikes of the Federal Reserve? Please have a look at these kind of shocks by yourself. Could be re very relevant for the next upcoming exam. Thank you very much for watching this video. Hope you enjoyed it. Please uh, leave a like on uh, my uh, channel and we'll meet again. Bye-bye.